very good afternoon to all. Today, I will share with you on my story during my university time. And I call it the story of technology that cares. A bit introduction about myself. I'm Kao Kang Xiang and one of the co-founders for TechCare Innovations from Drambha. And I graduated from UTM three years ago, taking my degree of electrical mechatronics. And now I'm taking my bioengineering PhD in UTM. TechCare stands for technology that cares. Our mission is to develop and deliver compact, portable, and interactive rehabilitation and interactive devices. There are different kinds of invention that we develop. Today, we will share you three of our invention that we develop along the presentation. Our invention won some awards, and we are featured in newspaper, digital media, and even the business radio. So how the story gets started? Well, when I enter university, I don't actually have any ideas on what I'm going to do for the next four years and right after that. All I have in my mind is this. When I was born, I had to go to school, college, and then I graduate from university. I get a good job, and then I can retire. And I believe this happened to most of the students where we were going through this journey. But a lot of things has changed, and it changed my entire life because what I did in university. And during my first year, I joined a robotic competition called Robocon. We worked very hard for the one whole year to build robots for the competition. And we didn't sleep and we didn't eat. We worked very, very hard. I still remember one night I was holding a screwdriver I was fixing a part on the robot, and I was too tired, and then I fall asleep. Well, the next day mornings, I'm still holding the same position. <laughs> and guess what? I have to continue screwing it. <laughs> and until that level of extent, it was a very tough time. But the good thing is I learned a lot of engineering skills to build robots. That year, we won the best design award in Egypt representing Malaysia, and we are very happy, having a good time for celebration. And of course, we took a lot of photos, as usual. But one question came in my mind after the competition, and I was wondering, why should I struggle so hard to do this? Is it just for the sake to win the competition? And why, as a student like us, why should we study so hard to learn all this knowledge and skill? And I asked around my friends, and they tell me the answer. Yep, if you have a good score, and then you have a good skill, then you can get a good job. But I think there should be something more that worth so much of our effort in learning all this skill and knowledge. And this question keep in my mind for two years until I visit a stroke center. Inside the stroke center, I saw a lot of stroke patients doing rehabilitation trainings. And they are very difficult doing the trainings. I saw and I noticed one of the stroke patients who is as young as me, tricking his leg, doing even walking, is very hard for him. And I can feel his difficulty in his life at that age. And at that very moment, I found an answer for my question. And I tell myself, I want to help people with the skill that I learn. And it's important to have a good mentor to guide us along the journey. I was very fortunate to meet Dr. Yong Ji Fai, a very dedicated lecturer from UTM, who guided me along the journey. We don't actually know what we should build in first place. So what we do is, I go to Nasam Penang, the National Stroke Association of Malaysia, Penang General Hospital, Melaka Hospital, and many other centers, trying to understand how the current rehabilitation are being carried out and what is their current limitation. We hear a lot of suggestions and feedback from therapists, and then we go back to our university 
and we start to build our very first rehabilitation robot. And if you can notice, do you know where is it? <laughs> yes, it's inside the hostel in UTM, in KDC. We are students, right? And you can see a lot of components on the ground. We don't even have space to walk and sleep. We spend months of hard work to do this. And then after that, here is how it looks. CR2 reaching, CR2 stands for Compact Rehabilitation Robot. Used for shoulder and elbow reaching training movement. Where the patient can train by playing the virtual reality games. And why we add in the game elements is because therapists ask us to improve the motivation for the patient to do trainings and that's why we add in the games inside. And then right after that, we send it for the therapist in the hospital to try it out and we get a very good feedback. And we even send to patient to try it with supervision of therapist. And normally patient will not have very high motivation to do trainings because it's very tired and painful. But when we put our device in the center, all the patients just line up behind and excited they want to try the device. Why? Because they say they want to play the games, not doing the trainings. And that's how we want to improve the training experience for the patient in the future. We joined the innovation competition so that we can learn from the expert and get the feedback. That year, in 2012, we won the first place in Mayanovasi, and we won some fun to continue the development. And we thought everything will go smoothly as it goes. And that is not the case. We meet a lot of challenges and hurdles. And there are one very memorable for me, and I would like to share with you. There are one competition in Indonesia we practice until 5 a.m. in the midnight, and we're doing very hard to do all the preparation. We did our very best, and, but still, we lost the competition. I was very disappointed, because I thought we did very well, but probably we can get the first place. And that day, I was very depressed and sad. And then, I can't even sleep. And then, the next morning, I was wondering, why should I feel so disappointed? Am I doing this for the sake to win the competition? No. I'm doing this to help people. And this become a big wake-up call for me, where I always remind myself, that I must always remember my purpose. And then, good things will come when we have the right mindset. Along the journey, we won many awards, over 20 international and national awards. Thank you. And we also joined one of the challenging competition, the British Invention Show which is the UK largest exhibition for innovation and technology. There are a lot of participants there, companies from Russia, from Germany, US, Italy, and many other countries. And as a student in final year, we didn't expect so much. What we think is probably we did our best and we see how it goes. And that year, we won the gold medals. And then, Diamond Award for Commercialization. Well, we also won the World Invention Award, which is the top prize among that competition. <laughs> what I want to say is, never ever limit your potential, because you will not know how high you can reach. And of course, as a student, we need to maintain our study as well, other than joining activities. And a lot of students may find it very difficult to do that. What I want to tell you is, it is possible. It is just a matter whether you want to do it or not. Three of us win the three academic awards. 
I myself win the Vice Chancellor Award, Patrick won the Shell Academic Award, and Sean Kemp won the Malakoff Excellent Award. If we can do that, I believe you can do it even better. And after graduation, we didn't just stop there. We want to continue this to help the people. That's why we started the company, Tech Care Innovation, one of a spin-off from UTM. We built more innovation for rehabilitation trainings. And here is our second invention, CR2 Haptic, used for wrist and forearm rehabilitation training. It provides interactive robotic trainings, and most importantly, it will give assistance for the patient, act like a physiotherapy. And then more importantly, act like a physiotherapy when patient need assistance. It will provide assistance when patient need it. And of course, when patient start to improve, it will give the resistance for the patient to improve their strength. It is modular, not only trained for this movement, it can train for many other training movements by changing the modules on top of it. And of course, it can assess the performance of a patient along trainings. And we are very fortunate and honorable to meet Janet Yeo, NASA founder chairman, who is also one of the stroke survivors. She started NASA, the National Stroke Association of Malaysia, which is a non-profit organization to help stroke patients to do rehabilitation training across Malaysia. Today, they have eight centers serving hundreds of patients every day. They are very supportive with us and give a lot of feedback to us. Here is what she said. To me, that, that is very good because by doing that, rising to the challenge, I am actually improving my wrist movement and my grip because without the wrist, without the grip, I cannot catch the raindrop. This is a very good project. Uh, we have tried it. Uh, I have tried it and my therapists have tried it. And I would say yes, I would want the public to, to support it in whatever means, either purchasing, either donation, in whatever means to endorse it and to support it as well because it actually will go back to helping the stroke community of Malaysia. We work very closely with NASA and we sincerely thank them for providing all the support and clinical expertise. After many improvements, the device is now being used by stroke patients in their rehabilitation center. And we are excited also to see a lot of inquiry from different countries. This is hospital in Malaysia. They hope to use it, the device in their hospital, Hong Kong, US, Canada, and even French. This is a message we received from a father of a young 15 year old girl who had a stroke seven months ago. And at that point, I realized that the skill and knowledge that we learn is not only helping the local community, we can actually help the people across the country, around the world. And the innovation doesn't stop there. Here is our latest invention, Feeball, used for ankle and body balance rehabilitation trainings. So why balance? There are a lot of times that we tend to forget our balance skill. Do you know how good is your balance? No, we all do not know. And I myself don't even know how good is my balance. But the fact is, after 30 years old, our balance starts to decrease. Until 65, we tend to fall. But until that time, if we want to improve our balance, it's too late already. At home, we have weighing skill. We have blood pressure monitor to monitor our body condition. But we don't actually have a balance assessment skill to assess ourselves at our home. And that's why we come up with FIBO, which is a balance assessment skill, also a training device. Let me show you how it works. There's a semi-sphere down, and then when we stand on it, it can wobble around. We can test on the assessment. Let's do the assessment now for my partner. Okay. The red mark is the current user position. What he needs to do is to stand as center as possible within the 10 seconds. It's very simple. 
So within 10 seconds, all the data will be collected by the software, and the algorithm will compute and come up with a score. 29% having low risk of getting four. <laughs> and within 10 seconds, we can know how good is our balance. And this is how we want to change how we live in the future. And the best part is, of course, we can play games by doing trainings. So what you need to do is to shift your body, left and right, front is to jump, back is to slide. You have to move as far as possible so that you can get more score. And while he is doing this, he need to you can he can actually improve his body coordination and strengthening his ankle. Let's see how far he can go. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> That's good. High score. Thank you. Well, these are achievements during my university time with the support from UTM. We won 30 innovation award. 10 IPs, 8 publication, secure close to 1 million funding, and travel over 10 countries around the world. They are French, UK, Egypt, and many other countries. What I want to say is the skill and the knowledge that we learn from here in university can actually be translated to help the people in our society and never ever underestimate your potential. If you have the right purpose and strong determination, you will succeed in what you do. My name is Ko Kang Xiang, and I'm a graduate from UTM. Thank you. Thank you.